I know, I imagine for a lot of you out there, this probably just about sums up your feelings on COVID-19, but we've got to take a look at what's going on because I think we've reached a grim milestone. Collectively, we appear to be undergoing a large-scale indoctrination, and just hear me out on this one. If you reflect on what you know about cults, gangs, uh, brotherhoods, even politics, they all have something in common, and that's an assimilation process. Because if you think about the typical practices usually involved in these circles of cults and gangs, they seclude and separate their victims. They psychologically wound or manipulate them. Then they move on to acclimatizing the victim before finally there's the meshing, the integration. Now you tell me that we haven't been undergoing just that. We're being separated and sequestered with the social distancing and stay-at-home orders. Many are being psychologically scarred by fear-mongering and scare tactics. And then we have the acclimation and conditioning which is made possible by the talking heads and mainstream news media mouthpiece. This all in an attempt to gradually shift the mood of the masses to assimilate them into a new world, a new future. And just what kind of future are we being coaxed into, you might ask, right? We're talking about a future where drones fly around and can see if you're six feet apart. They can even tell if you're coughing or sneezing, displaying other symptoms, okay? This is a future where big tech companies track and spy on you, but they call it contact tracing, which is just polite newspeak for privacy invasion. And this is the same kind of newspeak that they use for social distancing, which is just polite for crowd shaming. And as if having your privacy invaded by these tech giants aren't enough, governments are doing the same thing day in and day out. This is nothing new. Now to keep the disorientation and confusion alive, they keep adding more symptoms to this thing, and in the wake of that, there's a dragnet of illnesses that are being lumped in with the COVID diagnosis, okay? And this is what I'm talking about. Some places for a second week in a row are reporting no new flu deaths because in some cases, the common flu is being wrongfully diagnosed as COVID-19. And if you find that hard to believe, let's just take a jog over to the CDC. Now, this is straight from the CDC's website, okay? And here they're talking about the identification process, all right? Now listen to this. When they ask, will COVID-19 be an underlying cause, they answer with, the underlying cause depends upon what and where conditions are reported on the death certificate. However, the rules for coding and selection of the underlying cause of death are expected to result in COVID-19 being the underlying cause more often than not. So what they're saying is chances are good that diagnoses will come back as COVID. So if you were a betting person, you'd bet on it coming back as COVID. Now, the coding this is talking about is the International Classifications of Disease, or ICD, okay? And this is straight from the WHO, the World Health Organization. And what does it say here? It says, an emergency ICD-10 code of U07.2 COVID-19, which is virus not identified, can still be assigned to a clinical or epidemiological diagnosis of COVID-19, even if laboratory confirmation is inconclusive or not available. So essentially, you can contract COVID and die of another illness, and they could still say you died of the virus. This is how states like New York and others were able to just add presumed cases to their counts. These were unconfirmed uh, cases of death, 4,000, and they can say it's COVID without ever testing. So no, the numbers cannot be trusted. And if you do want a further breakdown of this, uh, as always, I'll provide a link below. The guy right here, he does a great job of going in depth on the number subject. So in addition to the testing failures, there's also a breakdown of the criteria on how the numbers are even reported. And that's unfortunate, okay? And I touched on it in a previous video, but there's still rampant false negatives and positives uh, so much so that the United States, Spain, Britain, Turkey, other countries have all been calling foul on the testing accuracy. But that being said, let's just humor these numbers. Currently, worldwide infections, at the time of this recording at least, they sit above just 3 million, while the recovered individuals are essentially at a million, and the death toll isn't even at half a million. So thankfully, flawed as they may be, the numbers still show that more people recover from COVID than give up the ghost. So let's pray more folks recover. We have essentially a million people worldwide recovering and continuing to recover, and the numbers haven't reached, fortunately, half a million yet. So why the incessant propounding? Why the constant COVID-19 waterboarding? It's because this is an initiation ritual. 
they're manufacturing consent. They need you to consent to this new world future. And they're leveraging deception and distorted truth to achieve that. And by now, that should be clear. And I'll say it again, folks have seized on people dying from this virus when we need to consider how to live with this virus going forward because it's here to stay. We need to start considering the consequences and impacts of our short-sightedness contending with this. There's looming food shortages. We've got the economy tanking. We better be paying attention. COVID was used as a license to almost completely upend things. Make no mistakes about it, our performance as a collective during this pandemic has been very telling to the orchestrators. We are nowhere near ready for the next series of coordinated world shakeups they have on tap for us. And I think they're counting on that. Because if you thought Corona took the cake, well, just you wait.